Okay, so this, um, <clears throat> this kind of arrangement uh, doesn't contain that type of condition. Yes, it happened as a result of what we refer to as consequential bay or self or accidental bay or self. Mm. What do you mean by consequential bay or self or accidental bay or self? The customer has kept his money with the bank. For the bank to carry out toward recommendation in favor of the customer. But at the time the customer back in the money with the bank, the bank is not able to carry out the transaction. And bank being a bank may use this money within that period before starting the tawaruk. Mm -hmm. Now, consequentially, banks has used this money as a loan. Mm -hmm. It has become a liability on the bank. Mm -hmm. It has become a loan. Mm -hmm. But this type of loan, we are saying that it is not the loan that was intentional. Mm -hmm. It only came tabian, consequentially, mm -hmm. accidentally. Because of that, it has no effect to give rise to or to trigger bear or self. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's other types of banking transactions that you also looked at that have, that raise the issue at least. Is this bay or self? Yeah. Um, so... Uh, One of those one issues is uh, Arahan, uh -huh. uh, mortgaging, whereby a customer lead some uh, uh, a credit from the bank, and the bank will take uh, Raha, we collect the customer's uh, gold or any other precious property. Mm. So the bank normally share the customer what they call safekeeping fee. This is where the issue of bill seller arises. This safekeeping fee in our FGD conducted for this research and our engagement with notable experts that this safekeeping fee is not based on actual cost of the safekeeping. Mm. Therefore, the bank is charging the customer above and over the actual cost for keeping that property. And yet the bank is giving loan to this customer. Here we have loan. And here we have a, a charging above the actual cost, which gives rise to bay or selling that is prohibited. Among all our investigations, which we have mentioned in this uh, IROP 101, this is the only product that we said that we cannot do otherwise. We, have, we are left with no option than to say this is a clear bay or selling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, you've given our viewers now an overview of the paper. Yes. Uh, any final comments you want to give? Uh, the only other aspect is uh, we look at the historical perspective of this hadith. Why did Rasulullah mention this hadith? Because some hadiths have several. Just as some verses of Quran have several, several with Muslim. Mm. However, we did not see in all the classical books anyone who discussed the several of the Hadith. But we did our own effort. May Allah forgive us if we are wrong. So we infer that the cause of this Hadith may not be far from the reason that the people of Mecca were engaged in riba. It is clear. That is why Rasulullah was not announced on the day of a farewell pilgrimage in one of the riwaya, and others said that uh, he made that announcement to abolish all riba on uh, the day of a fair to Mecca. So he said that uh, uh, kunu riba He has abolished. He has written off all the riba of jahiliya and that he started with his uncle, the river of Abbas, that he has abolished it as well, to cite an example. So we said, 
Though people of Mecca, having become Muslims and they submitted to the dawn and doors of Islam, however, because they were traders, there were still remnants of element of transaction that couldn't need to rebar. So that is why Rasulullah made them to understand that this type of transaction of combining sale and loan together is also prohibited and it can lead to riba. So that was why he sent uh, a type even a seed to go and inform them to desist from this type of uh, transaction. So inshallah I think uh, with this I would like to stop here. Thank okay. you very much. Jazakallah khair. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Don't forget to uh, keep watching. Uh, we'll have more installments from the series Inside Islamic Finance uh, posted from time to time on the iFicker website.